All right, so um, this video is about the Impulse Lab uh, that you're gonna do online. So let's go ahead get into it. I'm gonna show you how to do it, what you should be collecting data, kind of, um, you know, the objective of this lab. This is a, a lab write-up. So you'll be doing the, the normal lab write-up with procedures, stuff like this, the same like a purpose, intro theory, uh, materials, procedure, same thing. Okay, so everything you're used to, um, you know, we're just gonna, this is just for about impulse this time. All right, so let's take a look at this. So it's under the impulse, it says impulse lab. Um, this gives you kind of a background information and, and you know, purpose. Uh, the link to the lab is right here. So you can go ahead and click on this. So astronaut guys is the beginning. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be looking at how mass affects velocity and then be able to calculate the impulse exerted on the guy, okay? So in other words, um, you know, there's a couple things we can change here, all right? You can change the force. So let, let's just look at what happens here. So when you hit activate, a fire extinguisher starts shooting out. You got time here. You have to shut it off. So you can't set the time. You got to kind of like mess with the time here. And then he goes through these photo gates and that gives you a time to go 10 meters. So you've set a delta x here where he's moving at a constant speed so you can calculate an, uh, a velocity using the photo gate time all right so now that we know kind of what's happening here okay what you can change is you can change the amount of force that the fire extinguisher shoots and so now i mean it should shoot out most powerful so you should go faster so if i shut it off you know it, it obviously had more power behind it because it had more force okay on uh, it, it was a shorter time so i reset it you can change his mass. You're gonna be changing this person's mass throughout this. And that's just, that's pretty straightforward. Now, you are manually going to activate and shut off the fire extinguisher. You are gonna manually do it. You have to, you have to click start and you have to click stop, okay? So what we're observing and think about this, I just said, we're gonna take a look how mass, all right, affects the velocity and how that relates to impulse. That's the purpose here, how mass affects the velocity, so changing the mass, and how that relates to impulse. So if I look here, what variables am I keeping the same? Well, I'm gonna keep the fire extinguisher's force the same, right? The force is gonna be the same, so whatever I set it, I set it to. And the time I fire the extinguisher has to be the same. So now that's on you. You have to be able to kind of stop it relatively close, all right? So whatever time you're gonna set it to, you have to keep it to. So in other words, let's say I start this, I'm gonna say I'm gonna keep it on for three seconds. So I'm gonna activate it. One, two, three. Pretty good, I was off by, you know, 0.2 seconds, all right? But you see how I got a count and I kind of anticipated it? So let me do it again. I'm gonna reset, I'm gonna activate one, two, three, almost spot on, right? Almost spot on here, okay? So you have to control the time. Remember, that's gonna be a constant. The only thing we're varying here is mass. So for this lab, you're gonna have to do multiple trials at each mass. Multiple, because because now we've, we've uh, you know, incorporated some source of error here because you know, you have to start and stop that. It's going to be impossible to start, start and stop it at the same exact time, okay? So what I recommend, so let's think think about it. You're, gonna, you're obviously going to have mass. So if I look at this, if I make a data table here, let's see what I got here. I'll have mass, right? Uh, I'll have time one, time two, time three, uh, time average, so your average of time, and then your last column should be velocity. All right, what you're gonna set constant is you know delta X is gonna be what, 10 meters. You're gonna have a force, you're gonna set a force constant, whatever you have that, and you're gonna have a time constant. So make sure you write those down, what you're trying to get it to. Actually, never mind. you don't even need to write the time, you're gonna have that time. That's, you already have that in the, in the chart. So sorry, you don't need to write. Them. Those are the two you gotta write down because they're not gonna be in your chart, okay? Um, what I want you to do is you're gonna have to do 10 different masses, 
All right, so start with one mass. You're gonna change the mass 10 different times. Okay, so you end up with 10 different, um, 10 different um, data points, okay? So once you fill out this table, all right, you should obviously know how to uh, calculate velocity. I'm not explaining. You have a delta X and you have a T. You're moving at a constant speed. It's the easiest calculation in the world. Don't mess that up, okay? Uh, time, very easy. So what we, think about what we changed here. What were we changing? Well, we were changing our mass, right? So changing would be independent variable. Our dependent variable, well, what depended upon its mass? Well, the velocity, right? Because we kept the force the same, we kept the time the same. Uh, so our, so we're going to be a, graphing a mass versus um, a velocity versus mass graph, right? So if I draw it, let me draw it. So mass is what we're changing. Velocity is what, um, uh, you know, what depended upon our mass change, right? Everybody's good so far. I mean, that's basic common sense, right? We kept changing the mass and it changed how fast we were going at this point here, okay? So let's look at this. Remember, this is equal to, you can also say that this is equal to impulse, right? And we want to see how this relates. Well, if I look at this, what do I know about these two variables the entire time? The entire time we're doing it. Well, what do I say? I'm keeping the force constant. So this is a constant number. And I'm trying to keep the time constant as best I can. So this is a constant factor, right? Force is the same. Time is the same, right? So really, the impulse imparted on the astronaut is the same. We can, calc we can calculate it. You should know it. It's going to be the same every single time. Because the force is the same, all right? And the time it takes is the same. All right. So that's your constant value, impulse. Okay. Well, I'm giving you all the answers. So this lab is really easy. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out a relationship of this graph that gives me impulse. There's your hint right here. Here's your hint. Impulse equals this. It also equals that. All right. Remember, we want a direct relationship because I am not expecting this graph to be linear. All right. And you should not expect the graph to be linear also. Okay. So uh, once you graph that, all right, you're going to have to linearize the data, linearize the graph, and give me a linearized graph. And then you're going to have to tell me what the slope is. Okay. So let me kind of just go through this. Uh, you know, expectations here, okay? Procedure, uh, I'm sorry, purpose, one or two sentences. There should be no questions about that, okay? Uh, introduction and theory. So let's talk about, let me share something else here. Uh, new share, where's new share? There it is. Intro theory. what you should talk about. Well, you should talk about momentum. You should talk about impulse. You should talk about impulse. Momentum. Theorem. Um, what else? You, you need to talk about the variables involved. You need to talk about how changing them affects the outcome, right? I, I, I did a whole lecture on how changing the variables for impulse changes the outcome on an object, right? There was fake videos that I didn't have anymore. So you should rewatch that if you forgot. Um, so if you include all this, that should be good. Uh, procedure, remember, it's just how you collect the data. All right, so your data table should look like this, mass T1, T2, T3, um, T average, and then velocity, okay? And then you have one through 10 trials. So 10 different masses, okay? 10 different masses. 
Also note that your force, whatever force you're keeping, and also note that delta x equals 10, and you're going to use that. Okay. Uh, no calculations here. Um, you're really just graphing this data. Um, so what I expect to see is this, is data analysis. I should see, you know, our independent variable is mass, our dependent variable is velocity. Linearize that graph. I'm not telling you how to do that. You can do that. Uh, then I want to know, uh, well, before, before you linearize, so let's, let me erase this. You should be talking about this. You should say, uh, you know, what is our independent, dependent, okay, um, you know, the relationship between the two, all right? Then you're going to linearize. How did you linearize? So you gotta tell me what you did, uh, you know, new axis. So what's on your new axis, all right? What does slope equal? What is your slope equal? You're analyzing this, okay? Uh, so that would be your data analysis. And then um, what you can do from there is write your conclusion, all right? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. This lab's not too bad. Okay. You just got to analyze some data. You know, when you're looking at slope, if you're confused, look at units, look at what the variables are, you know, think about what slope is. Remember slope is just rise over run. Okay. So think about what happens. Think about how you linearize. You should have access to the, the chart, the linearized stuff. Um, really should be easy here. An easy write up. Um, So again, remember, you're keeping the force the same, you're keeping the time you exert it the same. You're changing the mass, getting velocity, you're seeing how they relate, okay? And then going from there to find impulse, the impulse imparted. Remember, the impulse is the same, because force, remember, impulse equals Okay, force is staying the same, time is staying the same for every trial. It doesn't matter. Mass doesn't affect this, right? Mass doesn't come into play there. So therefore, you know, the impulse is going to be the same every single time, no matter the mass. All right. Good luck. Hope all of you do well. Get your data, 10 different masses, three trials each time, uh, and then go ahead and do your lab writing. All right.